103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, November 8th, 2020. We do our live recording at that time on Sundays and rebroadcast the recording on Wednesday evenings on uh, WOZO Radio. I'm Larry Larry Rhodes, Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know you're seeing, octopuses in the neighborhood. Uh, um, <laughs> must be a mushrooms or something. <laughs> Our guests today are Doubtfire, Bugsy, Red Pirate Higgs, and George. George is just now coming in. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we will be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in video show broadcast yes. here in Knoxville? It has been for over 10 years. Absolutely. Did you know that, Wombat? Yes, and my, I think it's really, really good because it teaches kids about science. And I think yeah. the funniest part is when Arnold's like, I knew I should have stayed home Arnold. today. Like whenever the school bus shrinks down into like a tiny little no, thing goes in one of the no, school no. kids' bodies, he's like, I should have stayed home yeah. today. I'm, sh- I'm I love sure it. that's it's a great. good show, but it's, it's not so good. our show. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. And yeah. It's a magic school but, bus. It's amazing. But you're having trouble finding it, so we'll tell you how to do that after the mid-show break. If you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock Eastern. Wombat, what do you have for us today for as far as topics we're, go? We're going to be talking about what's the deal with misinformation and probably take a nice collective sigh <laughs> one by one yeah. as we go around. And Indeed. Then, and maybe sure. even go into the nature of like, uh, particularly in this season, why SE is useful, why we can use it to determine like true things, false things, but also standards of evidence in the upcoming weeks, maybe even months, as we will hear things that are patently not true. <laughs> what as can we, we do this week? Yeah, that's <laughs> what we have already. And what can we do to be able to parse these kinds of things in the future? Because we want to hold everyone to those same standards. But before we begin... I'm going to throw it over to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. All right. Well, in honor of this auspicious event, while Trump whined the Dems had conspired, the subterfuge wasn't required. Joe won the vote. In history, will note, Trump didn't lose. He was fired. Oh, <laughs> oh man. man. <laughs> that is trading room if you're watching that right now uh, you're, you're gonna love that so that's a good one i i want to go around maybe we can just take a sigh of relief if your if your candidate didn't win that's totally fine too but at least uh in america there is and probably even the world over there's just anticipation for healing and and potential for unity and i think that's something that we can all agree on, that we need to take these tensions and cool them down a little bit. And I think we have the best candidate in order to be able to do that. So here's me going, <sighs> Scott, how are you feeling? Do you need to take a breath right now? <laughs> how, how have you been oh, this man. week? I've, I've, I've been taking breaths all weekend, man. Um, all weekend? Wow. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I've been staying in the house, staying out of the mix because um, – in Newport Beach, which isn't far from me, the, uh, there's been a lot of demonstrations mm. with the uh, Trump people really mad about the results of the election, and they've just been all on the news feed and everything else and just going crazy. And, you know, I'm not too far from there, so they're driving around with their Trump trucks and <laughs> all of that stuff. So I've been kind of wanting to kind of stay out of that whole thing sure. right yeah. now, you know. Good move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I, if it wasn't for the coronavirus thing going on, I would be out there with a table and two microphones. But even then, I'm just oh, like, yeah. uh, I don't, I don't want to risk it. I, I want to wait until we have an administration that knows how to make a vaccine. I'm so, so super glad that we will have a, a vaccine that comes out that's not pressured because you can't rush biochemistry. I'm saying this as a biochemist. Mm -hmm. Sometimes bacteria <laughs> need time to do things. <laughs> you can't be like, multiply <laughs> faster. Meiosis. I don't have time. It's like they don't work on your clock. Uh, Larry, I'm going to throw this out at you too. Uh, how do you feel? How are you this week? Uh, collect a sigh of relief. Oh yes, definitely. It was a great week. Um, <clears throat> I have to say that I wasn't feeling too good on November third evening when most Same of the map was red. Uh, but I'm I'm a dyed in the wool Democrat, so it sure was nice to see those states flip as, yes. uh, as the week went by, and finally Saturday morning to to get the news that uh, Biden had actually taken Pennsylvania. The, Help me out. How sick did you feel uh, November 3rd evening? Like, uh, I went to bed. It, it's so know, sad. I, it's, I felt bad for the future of the country. I felt yeah. bad for how our country did not respond to this threat to democracy. Yeah. Uh, how, uh, you know, I, I lost a lot of faith uh, uh, Friday. I guess it was uh, Tuesday evening. But and atheists Saturday losing morning, faith? We have Saturday to talk about morning, that. Uh, it wasn't the blue wave. It was more like a, a blue tide. Don't let a Christian hear you say that. Yeah, the, no, the no, tide no, you can say no. But I it think did, this, took days. Larry touched on a great point because I did want to talk about faith in this show too. Because I do agree with the idea of atheists even have faith as well. It's that we just don't right. use faith as a means to determine if something's true or not. Like everyone can believe in something without evidence, but is that a good way to know if something's true or not? And right. I think atheists would agree that it's not, but I have faith, I had faith that we'd be here today, but it was shook that evening. And I was, I went to bed and I thought, man, I hate feeling more and more so that I'm a second class citizen, third class citizen in this country that I was born in, that my parents were born here and grandparents were born in. And I don't know how I'll feel going outside looking people in the eye and, and knowing that these people chose not to see me as someone whose life matters and, and could be a contribution to the society rather than just a statistic on a crime sheet, you know, like yeah, we, right. We contribute and so it much. also shows that the importance of getting out there to vote. Yes. It, yes. It's the only voice we have, the only voice that the powers that be will recognize in this country and most right. countries. But, uh, yeah. I it mean, was, look at, I mean, if it hadn't been for Joe Biden getting 70, what, 4,000 or 4, 74 million votes, hmm. Trump would have gotten the most votes in the history of the presidential race. Yep. But the only thing that saved it was that we got out there more. <laughs> we got out there Did more. It, it, that, sh yeah. that should be the double underline of this election. Get yes. out there. Yes. It's important. And and, and not only that, but shout outs to the people who are being well held by voter suppression. Uh, mm -hmm. I know some guys in Georgia who were in line literally for seven hours. They put blogs on YouTube of just like, I'm in this line for seven hours in Fulton County. That's near Atlanta area, near Gwinnett uh -huh. County. And I'm like, uh, seven hour line. That is such really terrible Bullshit. suppression. I mean, and you look at the margins of what Georgia won by one by it's like literally mm -hmm. like less than 10,000. So like every yeah. single yep. person in line who didn't turn away, who stayed in that line. Thank you so much for pulling through the people in Pennsylvania who stayed in line, the people in Nevada who stayed in line, we won and saved democracy by the thinnest of margins today. And I want that to be a lesson for for anyone who is like an autocrat who comes into the situation and just wants power, don't follow that playbook because we stopped you today. And you can do whatever you want now, but January 20th, you're getting kicked out whether you like it or not. George, what is up? I'm so glad to see you. Thank you, Tyrone. Oh, boy. Uh, what a discussion this is. I, I, um, I have to say... At my age, I am apprehensive, you know. Mm, yeah. It's hard to let it go. It's, it's hard to, I mean, to see uh, this country get so fascist, mm. um, you know, m the way my mind works is that I'm wondering, uh, what is the collective amnesia yeah. 
with which we as a country have forgotten the lessons of World War II. Yeah. And, and then the American Revolution itself, hmm. you know, when we fought to free ourselves from a king, from a dictator, hmm. that we're right ready to install another dictator, another king. And um, I can't help but think that the amnesia is emotional. You know, that um, because there are people I simply cannot talk with using logic about right. this, like my doctor, you know, it's, um, uh, it, you know, pe people believe that um, there is a force at work to undermine Trump. Um, it, it's it's crazy. Yeah. Well, but we all know that we, we all know that. And. And um, how do we as a nation, as a society, Can you prevent put a name this? to that force? I can't. I, uh, I can't, Larry. Um, I, mean, I don't you're know. You're not talking about Satan or something like that, are you? No, of course oh, not. It's the, course the, the dark side of the force. No, dark side. Is that it? Well, no, I'm, I'm talking about. Well, I mean, about, the Democratic uh, Party is a force that was trying to undermine uh, the, Demo the uh, Trump well, administration. Well, they did. Yeah, yeah I mean, basically. I, 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 so, um, they they did not specific. do it. As, as usual, the Democratic Party did a terrible job of it. Um, the Democratic Party did such a bad job of fighting back that. I mean, during the four years. During the four years, yeah. I mean, the, the impeachment um, was so limp-wristed. Yeah. The, 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 um, he could have been accused of so many things. Yeah. And they picked exactly one thing, which, of course, the, the opposition easily shot down. Well, and I think a lot of it was having to do with the uh, blinkers that was put onto the administration, I mean, the investigations by the DOJ. There was Correct. certain things we were allowed uh, as as a party to to bring to the table. Yeah. Correct. But I agree it, yeah. it could have gone better. Also, as a I populist, mean, I, it's not a surprise that there were Democrats that didn't like Trump. It's just a question of like when there's actively people already in Congress, actively people already in Senate, in the House and in Supreme Court fighting to keep power, even if it means to protect Trump then you have essentially a group of people who are fighting against the interests of, you know, like our people. And we've never had a, a government that's worked for the people as much as they fought against themselves for, for a really long time now. And what's really frustrating, I would say this, is it's embarrassing on a global scale. It, what we, uh, a democracy is a very delicate thing and it's not in the test of history, not a very successful form of governance. It, it's typically something that's prone to falling apart. And what we have is a very special kind of democracy because we're the rare superpower that is actually a bottom votes its way up to the top, bottom chooses the elected officials, bottom puts in the laws in place, bottom works hard and the top should work for the interests of the bottom. Like we have, we have that. And it's, it was losing, we were losing our grip on it. And I wonder how other countries were reacting to that idea because there are burgeoning democracies as well. And so, like, I'll throw it up to Canada. Dread Pirate, how you been? How do you feel <laughs> about this whole situation? Well, you know, I, I uh, am so happy for you guys. Hmm. Uh, and I know that there's certainly a lot of interests, Canadian interests, um, that are, uh, you know, sighing their collective sigh of relief as well um you know i know uh, you know certainly uh, the the news i've seen of trudeau um he's 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 got a great poker face yeah but, uh, underneath it uh, you could tell that um he was keeping a very close eye on things uh i remember seeing uh, one of the opposition uh, party leaders uh, jagmeet singh uh, he was a bit more vocal about his stand on it. And, uh, and so, you know, definitely Canada is, uh, is behind, uh, behind the choice that the Americans have made. So great. Good on you. 
I remember Trudeau when he was in the room press conference board and Trump was there and for whatever reason his daughter was there too like he brings his family everywhere and like Ivanka's making floaty eyes flirty eyes at Trudeau and Trudeau's like none of this none of that I need to get <laughs> these people I can't wait to get away from them please 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 <laughs> and it's just like every picture is like Ivanka's like hey what's up Trudeau it's like please leave me alone you crazy lady <laughs> I don't want anything to do with this family exactly uh, and I'm like this guy kind of gets it uh <laughs> so yeah hey we have a show to get into and i think it's probably oh well, george we'll get right to you but i think it's important that we get into misinformation we kind of started late today george final points yeah um well i was talking with a buddy of mine in denmark last week and of course he's he's a he's a former journalist as well and um uh he he was like biting his fingernails watching this election, you know, and and uh, a long time ago I said that uh, I told him that uh, Trump had been recycling t techniques that were used successfully by Adolf Hitler, mm. and one of one of them is. Uh, about uh, attacking the press, you know, and I said fake fake news, and I, and I said Hitler called it the lying press, and he says, oh yes, the legal presser, you know. So he was following yeah. that no. maneuver. It's it's literally textbook. Um, how do you how do you misinform the cover? You make them tr distrust the people who tell credible news, and if you read a book called what is it Animal Farm, what is yeah. it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It is Orwell. Orwell, step by step. Like people knew this is not a new thing Trump is doing. It's just a question of do we educate our kids to be able to recognize things like this? And right. I remember reading Animal uh, Farm when I was in middle school and it went way over my head. I'm just like talking animals, but they're not saying anything awesome. Can we watch Charlotte's Web, please? Can we go back to that? At least that's fun. <laughs> and it's not until then I'm an adult and I reread the book that I was like, oh my God goodness like that was bush era that was when the patriot act was coming in and he's just like saying like hey we need our own news source and ted turner came up with like fox news and i'm like this they this isn't real <laughs> right. this is what yeah. this book is saying and it's just progressively gotten worse and worse but you can recognize all the steps in the science you need for example one person that you can like argue and 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 lambast as your scapegoat so nancy pelosi became that or crooked hillary became that or the obama thing came that you need you need targets that are easy for the ignorant to to be angry at yep. so that way yep. you can stand on top of it and be like that's the problem don't look at me don't look at what i'm doing back here look at that thing yep. that thing's the problem it's a, it's essentially building a bunch of straw men yeah scott how do right. you feel Just... yeah it, it you know what's scary is i learned about more what i kind of what i suspected already is that people are so driven by emotions and driven by conspiracy theory and i just didn't know how widespread it was um and it's like you said they the uh the uh wrote the playbook is to destroy the credibility of those who speak truth like science mm -hmm. trump yes. attacked science trump yeah. attacked um the news media anybody that pretty much spoke against him or his policies or whatever. It was Trumpism, and whoever went against right. it, he was going to be uh, discrediting that person. It was just so funny to me to say, look, as a skeptic, you should consider the source. Like, think about what's in it for that person to lie. And there's a lot. Motivations. And so you should be just as skeptical about his claims because of what's in it for him. Mm -hmm. Um you know, but no one thought it, or the people who bought into it, they didn't think of it that way. They just went, they just went right with it. Yep. I you don't know, even, it's really it's scary. scary. It's scary to see that even in like the times that we're in and the first world country that we're in, in the modern age that we have access to information for everyone, we're still susceptible to the, the base tribalism that caused things like World War II or the, the Nazi youth, et cetera. <laughs> I, I think it's very important for us to understand, I mean, us as a society, our children especially, to understand the news media and how it functions mm. and who owns what, you know, like, understand the role of the puppeteer yes. like Rupert Murdoch, yeah. who is pulling the strings about the information that you hear. Yeah, it's like when you wake up in the morning and all the news stories are on the same sentence, same verbatim words, and it's like, who chose these words? Who's writing well, this? Well, I used to do that i used to be oh look at him he, he's the puppet 
We got you. No, no, no. I, got I was I was part of that because I was reading newscasts that came over the teletype sure. machine. Right. And every radio station was getting the same words. Yes. Like yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Word for and word. Someone wrote them. Yeah. And someone had an interest. And so how how do we make sure that interest is in the interest of the public? I have said this on a number of times. And Dread Pirate, I want to go back to you. I actually felt like I interrupted you. Did you have something to say? Anything you want. Hi. Hey, what's up, buddy? I like your hat. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I'd get the silly hat on. <laughs> okay. That's how we know it's a cult. That's it's how we cult. know it's a cult. It's my silly Although I have my we praise st- bacon. We, yeah, yeah. we praise bacon. So oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, no, I didn't have anything specific. I remember looking at a globe when I was a kid. I remember looking at a globe when I was a kid and I saw the borders on the globe and it was like USSR and it had this country, Ukraine was here. And I'm like, this is how it is. We're done warring. Like wars are over. And for the most part, this is where the lines are for the map. The map's the map. I'm just a kid. And I'm like, well, these things changed a lot in the past, but this is how they are. And then I remember like growing up and I'm like, that country that I, I remember isn't a country anymore. Uh, this country that was a country is a new country. They just claimed independence. I'm like, what? What's going on here? New periodic table elements. I remember seeing that for the first time, and I'm like, what? You, what do you mean? There's not only 89 elements. There's like 100. There's 90. Like we haven't even come up with names with them. This is insane. The flux of <clears throat> things that happened in the past won't happen today was was an <clears throat> eye-opening experience for me because terrible things happened in the past. Horrendous acts against humanity happened in the past, and they can just as easily happen today, tomorrow, next year, if we don't have a standard for accepting true information and how to treat people. And when I look at the Trump administration, all I saw Mm -hmm. was a person dedicated at coercion, at division, at making people angry and victimizing people as a result. And people supporting this person, not so much in the interests of claiming that he did what's right, but they've attached their identity so hard to what he represents that they refuse to look at him as as a critical agent that's responsible Mm -hmm. for his actions. And it's the same kind of lack of accountability that's applied to people who are like in a religious institution where they perform horrendous acts against people. And I find that so troubling that Oh, and, and so important that, like, you can't just be someone who's like, hey, man, I don't have to critically think. I, I don't believe anything weird. It's just, you know, the way how I was raised and it's, it's all good. Or like, I'm, I'm an atheist. I'm a scientist. I'm done now. I don't have to think anymore. It's like, no. Every single moment you have a chance to ask a question, question why you're doing something, put, throw some doubt into a situation, go for it. Because it's for your own interest to do so. Else you might end up like how we were in the past. And do everything you possibly can to question everything. It doesn't matter what it is, because truth doesn't mind being questioned. Truth wants to be questioned. Larry, go for it. Yeah, it's, it's an old saying, and those who don't know history are condemned to repeat it. But those of us who do know history are condemned to watch people repeat it who don't know <laughs> it. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. yeah. Speaking of which, uh, Larry, uh, you're going to have a birthday soon, not any time soon, but when you do, you know, plus four more, you could run for president and actually potentially mm. win. Oh, sure. <laughs> you're, mm. you're a spring chicken. <laughs> you got to feel pretty good about that now. Down or five for president. Yeah, you're like, I, I, I could probably go. knock this out. How do you feel? We saw. Did you see the uh, acceptance speech on his part? Did you see him like run down the uh, the the blue cur- the blue carpet? Oh, uh, uh, Biden, sure. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, a great yeah. speech. It was yeah. the most uh, forceful and most uh, present speech I've ever seen him do. It was really well done and really the points that he said in it were great. I didn't agree much with the uh, the religious way he ended it. Sure, um, but mm-hmm. at the same time, you know, everybody has the right to believe what they want to believe. Uh, That's true. Uh, they should have good reasons for it, mm. but it's but. I, I don't believe the same way he does, but I think that he represents what is best for the country right now. Right. And he said it well. That's actually an interesting point that you hit on. Uh, faith and Biden. He used the word faith multiple times during since mm-hmm. like election night. I remember the thing that he said the most was like, hey, you know, these numbers are looking bad, but that was when the red mirage was occurring. That's what he said, keep the faith, keep the faith. And I remember seeing, hearing that word and getting triggered because, you know, atheists, we don't like that word as much. But I didn't find an issue because we weren't necessarily using it as a mechanism to, to establish that the God was real. He was just saying, this looks bad. We don't have 
data to show that it'll look good, but I want you to believe that it will be good anyway. And I'm like, that's basically what faith is. And I found mm. it very that's good to hold on to that. Yeah. As, well, people as should remember that faith has multiple definitions. If you look it up yeah. in the dictionary, it doesn't just have one definition. It doesn't have there one definition in the Bible. Multiple definitions, and faith is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. If I, may I jump in? Absolutely. I, I just wanted to to say that uh, you know if um, at the end of voting, you're you know he's he's putting it out there to to have faith. Well, the de the decision's already been made. Yes. So the faith right. will not change the outcome. The outcome is already set. Absolutely, it's one of those weird. It's things, like though. having it's having faith in uh, you know that your numbers once you check them will match the draw that's already been drawn. Right, like uh, faith that you passed the test. Exactly, faith has nothing to do with it anymore. <laughs> So it's a useless By my definition anyway. It's a useless <laughs> objective technique. Yeah. But I would right. say this, it did make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah, think well, that's that was the, the whole purpose. Yeah, that and I think the purpose. And I needed yeah. a guy at that point at that night at that hour to just say something that made me feel like okay, I can at least try to get three hours of sleep tonight, right? Like, that's what I needed. <laughs> and it worked. Right and I'm like, I, I, it's like, I have the Christian, I was, had, I was raised Christian. I understand the appeal of being, you know, fed sure. emotional placebos. That was one of them. In my opinion, I was like, that's cool. I'm not using it as a means to say, hey, we're not winning the election on faith. We're going to do it on statistics and science. But mm -hmm. not bad. Uh, though he does go into the Bible hymnal book a lot of times, and he did so at the end of his um, acceptance speech. Here's my two points. Uh, I'd feel free to get, I'll get a round table on this, but we had, for example, an immoral, I don't think Trump even knows how to hold up a Bible. Like, <laughs> I think we have established that, right? right? So like, we have an immoral, a religious person. I won't even give him the dignity of being called an atheist, right? Uh, but we also have a very moral in my opinion, I think Biden has like very good vibes about him, very open, uh, very open to being diverse, loves science, like uh, acknowledges climate change, wants to work together, wants to unify good moral values there, but also religious. And I'm thinking like you can be moral and religious, and I'd rather have that as my president than immoral and a religious at the same time. I know. So mm -hmm. for me, this is a this was a contest on character. Uh, Scott, how do you feel? I, th I see you thinking. Oh, yeah, that, that's, you're exactly right, man. Um, and Biden seems to be a progressive type of uh, Catholic, so he doesn't mm. deny science, which is a good thing. So it, with all the meat and potato stuff or the main things that we need to worry about, he's on board with it. You know, he's he may speak with religious language or whatever the case may be, that may be something that plays to his advantage in some ways. Um, so as long as it isn't, you know, he's for separation of church and state. Yeah. He's for plurality of um, religious beliefs, which I'm for as well. Yeah, he's, he's not, he's for everything that Trump was um, against, which is yeah. a big plus, you know, so. For me, I don't. I'm I'm less scared of someone like a Biden or an Obama, even if they use religious language. Um, it's just a way of speaking the same points. I think in this case, I mean, if you're someone like an evangelical, then we've got a problem because they don't believe in the separation, and they want to uh, legalize or um, mandate religious belief one way or the other. That's their whole goal. But I don't think that's what Biden's about. That's not yeah. his platform. Biden strikes me as like the best kind of religious person who inspires progressive attitudes in other religious people and pulls them actually further away from the text that's in their holy books. Um, mm -hmm. Larry, what do you think about that? In the sense uh, of he's like... He's a progressive uh, religious person? No, in the sense that like, hey, he's if he was textbook... Catholic, he would be a really terrible choice, and we'd be between a rock and a hard place. But well, if he's mean actually, if he was a fundamentalist, if he was like a fundamentalist, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he's right. has the label and people identify with him because of the label, but he's showing that he's so much more progressive and thoughtful and aware and right. tolerant, that's well, going to inspire other people to be not as crazy and probably pull more right. from their mm -hmm. as well. Well, I've always said mm -hmm. that uh, 
people are good moral uh, characters in their society in an inverse proportion to how closely they follow the fu fundamentals of their religion. Right. right. So, uh, you know, I, I do respect the Catholic uh, upbringing in that they do tend to give you a good uh, general education. Uh, they they do value that quite a bit, and I think it, it helps to uh, fuel a progressive point of view. And uh, I'm I'm all with it. Uh, John Kennedy was a oh, was a Catholic, and there was a big worry back when he was running that if he got to be president, it would really be the Pope who ran America, and that that he he had to actually make a, make a speech that. That said that it, that would not happen. Hmm. Of course, it didn't come down to that with Joe Biden. Right. But, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, it's not something that really, really, I would think that we have to worry about with Joe Biden. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, Larry, how about we take us to the mid-show break? Okay. Sounds real good. This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're about halfway through the show. Uh, we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, November 8th, 2020, second half of the show. Let's talk about the atheists and free thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. Or you can go to Meetup or Google and search for Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, just go to rationalist.org and click on upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about Knoxville Atheist Calling TV show. Well, it's called Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And go to YouTube and you can find their live streaming and uh, archived shows uh, and uh, you can also find their old archives under free thought forum knoxville we've been doing the show for over 10 years um let's say if you're interested in getting involved with the radio or tv show just come to an ask meetup or rt meeting or go on facebook and look for either one of those and tell us you want to be involved you could be our next co-host or guest our guests today are uh, doubtfire uh, george uh, dread pirate higgs and scott uh, welcome all and we were talking about misinformation disinformation no we but were you talking might want to get to love or no <laughs> don't ruin it for me larry we were talking about where all the missing ballots were because missing ballots, this is a, that's it. yeah this is a huge conspiracy we need to look into this like where do they go did they go here? Did they get fall on a lake? Are they coming from dead bodies? Are they at the cremation center? Where are they? Where are they? Where is the love? Where is the love? The love. The love. The love. The love. Listener love. We got some Where is the here. melody of where is the love? <laughs> are you, are you correcting the my talent? Singing? I am. <laughs> Everybody's singing out of tune. I don't know what the melody is. Okay. I think Hillary so, took those and killed those emails. Yeah, no, I don't know. Killed those ballots. We had a really thoughtful comment today uh, for, from this week's show by Dadas. Um, it was long. It was a long comment, so I can't go through the whole thing. But he is basically making allusions to how we did in the first half of the show, where he's actually from Poland, right? Like he is much more steeped in the culture of watching how fascists can destroy the political mm -hmm. environments around you, and he was mm -hmm. just astonished by how the steps in our society were following the same steps that he had seen and or that he's aware of he's he, he's he's an older gentleman and i can't begin to empathize with a person who went through something like that or at least the aftermath of stuff like that and saw you know in the twilight of their lives oh it's happening again 
like we haven't learned anything this is this is really bad and like what can i do to to inform the next generation to not make the same mistakes that ours had and and make them realize that it wasn't a quick fix that it was a lengthy deliberate process that that set us back and is not worth going through again not worth mm -hmm. making the same mistakes to go through the same turmoil again <sighs> You know, one of the, th one of the things that really got me was that people nowadays really think, I mean, some people really think that anti-fascism hmm. is a bad thing. Yeah, it's anti-American. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, Antifa means anti-fascism. Fascism is bad. <laughs> and, but they, <laughs> they say, no, no, you know, we yeah, got to get those Antifas. Yeah. They've I, made it a bad word. You know? Right. Just, and that's, yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, hey, I don't like it when people start wagging the dog or the tail wagging the dog. It's like they, they take something that makes sense, but they force feed it to you as if it's bad. And... It's, it's assumed that they're right by all the people who are agreeing with them, even though it's obviously not true. And so like, if you have a bunch of police people being like, hey, there was some protest or dem for example, we had in our country or in my state, Nashville is nearby. There was a lot of pro-Trump support rallies that were going mm -hmm. on this weekend and no police whatsoever, but lots of guys with guns just just mulling around the streets being like yeah and flags and, and holding up assault rifles and all that stuff and i'm like you know what i won't go to walmart today let's just wait until this thing gets settled out <laughs> then biden wins and like a different crowd rushes into the street in completely different areas they're dancing in the streets unmarked cars all over the place police just strolling up and down watching everybody left and right and i'm like uh the narrative yeah, the priorities is so, wrong the priorities are all wonky up so i don't know uh i do know it's not a good thing and it's easy to say well we arrested some people today it's like well what were they doing they were dancing because someone got elected it's like well that's not a problem well they're anti fia they're antifa it's like so they're anti-fascist that seems like it's generally something that we would want to have in this country yeah. well, it's not we should all be anti-fascist we should mm -hmm. be. All right, Scott, how do you feel about this? I don't want you to, Man. you want to devil's advocate just, some interesting points? Well, I, I feel, I feel, I, I can't help but just feel great about it because, you know, my wife is from Africa and my children are biracial, of course. So for them, it was great, number one, seeing a uh, vice president that's going to be um, someone of mixed race. Yeah. Um, it's good to get rid of this Trumpism and this whole division for them too. And it's, it's just a good thing. I don't know. The only, um, maybe if I was to play devil's advocate was to say that we have to be just as vigilant about misinformation on the other side too. Like there's humans on one side and then yeah. superhumans on the other. I mean, uh, you know, Democrats, liberals can make mistakes too. And in fact, there's a lot. I, I mean, as far as my political philosophy, I'm, I, I don't. I'm not in the tank for either party, so to speak. I'm kind of in the middle somewhere for myself. Um, but you know, I don't agree all the time with political correctness and what that might lead to or sure. cancel culture and these yeah, types yeah. of things. I'm not really for that either. Um, I'm not on board with all of the, uh, maybe the um, economic uh, progressive ideas. Maybe there's some problems I can point out on that too. But again, I don't think Biden represents that extremism is what I'm kind of referring to. I don't right. think he's, he's going to be pushing in that direction. So there's nothing right. I can really kick back. I think he's more conservative than Trump is actually. Yeah. I think he's like so, in the Lincoln post civil war kind of mindset of like, we just need to get everybody together because we just went through a yeah. crazy fallout. Yeah. Like this is not time <laughs> yeah. to skew in the hard left direction or be a crazy Democrat in his point of view. Cause he was a Republican right. uh, dread pirate. Right. What do you got? Well, I was just going to say, because uh, a couple of times there, Scott, you know, mentioned the word race. And what I'd like to what I'd like to see is that we we eventually just move away from that whole notion that you know that there are races. We're one yeah, race. I agree. We share ninety nine point nine nine percent of our genes. Mm -hmm. There is no there is no there is no real fundamental difference between any of us, regardless of our color, 
of our gender, of, you know, of, of any of it. Yeah. And, and to yeah. artificially uh, place this race label on, onto people is, you know, it, it, it makes a problem that doesn't exist. And I think what, uh, yeah, know, I it's, say, it's time to start moving what, away from that whole uh, that whole label. I will be happy to move away Every, from the label when we actually have accurate representation of the no, I, I people get that who too. they're trying to represent. I think I think those got to work in tandem. Yeah, like yeah, it needs they, to get they, to the point where it's not as important stuff. anymore. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because when I see my wife in the morning every day, I don't see a black person. You know, I don't. It's because you don't open up like your eyes in the morning. You, 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 you stumble. You hump your toes. It's a. It's an unfortunate mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I well, just, never. <laughs> I just see human. I just see people. You know, I don't. I know it sounds kind of um, flaky or whatever to say. I don't see race. I don't see color. But you know, if, if what I've kind of learned is that you can you 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 can train yourself not to see those kind of things because. Yeah. If you just if you're just around people that are different from you enough, yeah, you're gonna it's all gonna dissolve away. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's it, just it, the truth. It, of the it's a thing called uh, it, there's a thing called cognitive ease, and uh, mm -hmm. and it's about <laughs> just repeating the thing that you want to appreciate over and over and over again mm -hmm. until <clears throat> it's it's what comes it's what comes to the top of mind yeah essentially also if you were to look at how the counties voted in in the election map like states yes red blue but if you go into those states it's like big city with a lot of different people together yes. living together blue mm -hmm. rural area where there's very few people no big colleges and and it's very rural red mm -hmm. And that was the pattern across the entire map. Yeah. It seems to be the case that exposure to different people makes you realize that different people are, are cool too. <laughs> and right. if you don't have those experiences, yeah. that's what happens. George, what do you got? Yeah. Well, I, you know, having moved here to the South and living in a rural area, mm. I've been thinking while we've been chatting. And um, one thing that, I seem to zero in on now is that people around here are very afraid of change. Oh, yeah, of course, everyone is. And, yeah. and um, comforted by familiarity. I think the same way that our cats are comforted by the familiarity of where their where their food bowl is located. Sure. Yeah, and I move you know, that around all the time. I like to mess with my. Cat. You move the cat's food, the cat gets upset. <laughs> yeah. And and so uh, I, because I think that um, one thing that we as a society should do is to pay a lot of attention to the psychology of what has happened over the last, um, oh, maybe 30 years in politics in this country. I, I don't think that um, we're going to understand and benefit from the understanding um, unless unless we, we do dig deep into the psychology of what's gone on. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, that takes we, education. We're not going to reason our way out of this. This is mm -hmm. we, we got to understand the um, the mental stuff that's been going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other hmm. thing that's the other thing that's occurred to me is that somehow I, I I've been thinking that we should make subversion of democracy a crime. Yeah. Whoa. Hmm. I worry what that would be in the hands of the wrong people. I know. I've, yes. I've been thinking that because you just, all you have to do is redefine democracy, or yeah. just have the mm. wrong person win, and then they'll be like, "Now I'm going to arrest all my enemies." You just gave me another tool. Isn't that great? <laughs> uh, I would say this: I like schools, I like universities, I like college because that was my first time where I was meeting Muslims. I have Muslims in my family, and it wasn't until I went to college that I was not thinking about them as people I'm related to that I don't talk to as much, but like people that I'm working with on a day-to-day -day, daily basis. And now those guys are in my friends' inner circles and I respect them on an intellectual level, uh, on, a f on a family level. Like I, I talk to them like almost more than like my own sisters <laughs> for the most part. And I, if you had told me before college, like, what do you think of Muslims? Like, I don't even know how to recognize them. I don't even know if like the head guard means that they're Muslim or they're from Punjab. Like, I don't understand it. Now it's like, oh man, it's Ramadan. I can't wait to 
tell all my friends happy Eid or Eid Mubarak. And it's nothing, it's no weight on my shoulders. It's just the fact that I was exposed to a culture. I, I had the chance to, to get over my own ego faults or, or little obstacles and just start to genuinely appreciate the person underneath all those labels such that when I hear the label again, it's like, yeah, but, I want to know about you because those don't even affect me anymore. And I feel like mm-hmm. you, when you have those uh, many so experiences in college and you're being taught by people from all around the world and you have friends that are from so many different kinds of color, colors, that shows on the election map that like where these big colleges and universities are located, all these kids are like voting blue because they they can see the rhetoric and they can analyze it and they can say you're saying people from china are bad i know like 40 people from china they're all cool Mm -hmm. i know this is not what you're telling me they're not evil you are being like you're deliberately misinforming the masses that's bad which gets to the heart of uh, a lot of the evangelicals and fundamentalists coming along and saying that higher education is bad because they they don't believe the same way that people who are educated uh, Mm -hmm. yeah and it also makes me feel bad when someone says, oh, I went to a Christian school. It's like, oh, you went to a school for mostly just white people to, to take Bible lessons mm-hmm. and learn really bad evolutionary uh, points of view, <laughs> yeah, right? It's story. like you missed the whole point of school. Like you missed the whole point. It's not to get a, a, a degree or a piece of paper or letters at the end of your name. It's to humble yourself in the process of trying to learn new things and understand how to do that better. And if you haven't learned how to do that and admit when you don't know something and work harder to, to, to establish some grip on, on the, this tangible, beautiful thing called knowledge, you've wasted an opportunity, wasted four years of your life. So don't do that. And I respect to Atlanta because Georgia pulled that from red to blue, <laughs> if you hadn't seen. Yeah. And that's yeah. Georgia Tech. That's Georgia University. That's Athens University. Good job, guys. I've been in Atlanta. I know it's like the Portland of the South. <laughs> it's surrounded by red for like 11 states all around it. And it's like, no, 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 no. We got this. And I'm, I'm really, really proud you guys pulled through. I feel like Georgia showed up at the party sort of like, hey, I brought chips. And everyone's like, Georgia's here? What? <laughs> Oh, and everyone's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Nevada's like, I'm coming. I'm, I, I, I called. I'm coming. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. It's like, all right, Nevada, you're good. It's all good. Well, that was Anyways, awesome. Yeah, it was just a wonderful, wonderful series. And um, I will. I want to throw one last thing out. Here's a. Here's an idea, and I'll. I'll do a roundtable on this. I am glad that it's Trump that did this because if it was a very well spoken, very uh, professional very good looking young guy that had Uh, all the appeal that we looked for, but was doing the exact same things. This would be a much harder fight. We needed a buffoon to charismatic. Yes. We needed a buffoon to show us like how bad this could have been. Like to just make it as stark for us. It's easier to see in that case. Mm. Mm. Scott, what do you think? I was uh, watching yesterday, a GOP lawyer who was um, against Trump. And he was saying that he knew all along that Trump is going to lead. He's going to destroy the Republican Party because he's a buffoon and because he's not well-spoken and because he's just so outlandish and out there. So he's glad to get him out of there because that might be the only thing that was going to save the Republican Party. But it's definitely going to be a little bit late for that for the next few years, obviously, with Biden, uh, with probably an eight-year term. But even beyond that, it might be a problem. And that's what he was afraid of. But if he would have definitely stayed in there for another four years, Republican Party would have been through, would have been done. And so he kind of was echoing your sentiment just now that, you know, it took a buffoon to get us here. And it's good for us, for people that value um, for progression and progressiveness. That's that's a good thing. He, he actually um, emphasized the problem with that kind of thinking and hopefully we'll learn and hopefully progress will take over from here and get us on the right path. Yeah. Like what if Mussolini looked like Tom Howard, like the Spider-Man kid, just like, Oh, he's adorable. I'll follow this kid wherever he wants. Or if Hitler didn't have that stupid mustache, right. It's just like, (laughs) I'm so glad like the people who are crazy do their effort to, to at least look the part because it's so easy for mm-hmm. us to look. Pa- yeah. oh, you got to remember that uh, that mustache probably came from Charles Chow, Charlie Chapman. Did it really come from Charlie uh, Chaplin? Yeah. True. Yeah. 
That's was he true. a fan? Okay. I think it was the yeah, other yeah. way around. I think Charlie Chaplin got it from Hitler. Oh, did you? I know Michael <laughs> no, Jordan I don't came know. up there last. I don't... That's all I know. <laughs> I don't know. Charlie oh, Chaplin, it was funny. Charlie Chaplin did make a, a, a film uh, parodying Hitler. <laughs> I think oh, it was that's right. Great that's what I got. It did, yeah, but it was yeah. a good speech, though. Like Charlie it Chaplin was, was woke in it. Yeah. yeah, it's like uh, it's if Hitler still aware woke now. up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's still relevant even today. Dread Pirate, what do you think of the idea of like? Thank goodness Trump was a buffoon. Um, if you looked like Tom Hanks and acted like you know Tom Hanks, this would have been a much harder fight. Are you still here? Oh, looks like he is still figuring things out. I will throw <laughs> this out. I will throw this out. George, uh, the idea of Trump buffoon, if he was more suave, if he was a bit more well-spoken, do you think we'd be here today celebrating a Biden victory? That's a great, that's a, I think that's a great question um, because I've been, I, I've been looking at the parallels between Hitler and Trump. And I think, it, uh, I think on Trump's part and his advisors as well, it's been a very deliberate process. Hmm. It's been, been a very deliberate, um, uh, calculated employment of those techniques. And I think um, one difference is that Hitler was a better actor. He was a better actor. He was a scary, well-spoken German dude. He was a very well-spoken German. Well, no, he he was he he could be very dramatic yes. at his rallies. Yes. Rallies being another t technique, and the rallies being a religious event of worship of the dictator, and um, uh, but but that that. Uh, Trump is impulsive hmm. to be a good enough actor the way, I mean, Hitler really studied to portray, you know, to, to, to self-portray himself this way. And he was good at it. He was better than, than, than Trump. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm, I, we're glad that we're here. We're glad that we're here. We could have gone so many other directions, but we are here today. And I think that we should not be too... Um, uh, self-satisfied yet you know we shouldn't yeah. we still have a big fight ahead of us um yeah what's weird is this uh we're waiting for a concession from trump and we may not get it which will be a very we bizarre thing in our american history we got a concession speech though from guess who kanye west <laughs> we did get a concession speech from Kanye West oh, and that boy. says something and it's in my head and you guys are going to hate me for this yes Kanye West says terrible things absolutely but he's not running for well he's not the president of the United States he was running but it, I, there was no chance he was going to win and he wasn't even running in all the states right. who is this other guy on the ticket Kanye West kept, no no this is this, this other fellow who keep the, kept on popping up in the statistics the election hmm. statistics Joe somebody, I think. I oh, it's her. a girl. It's a libertarian. Joe Jersadine. Yeah. Okay. We can't take yeah. libertarian seriously on this show either. So. Yeah. But I was saying, like, the message, the message of Kanye West being willing to concede, it's like, who is a more bigger egomaniac, Kanye West or Donald Trump? Hey it seems like Donald Trump. Donald Trump, Donald absolutely, Trump. absolutely. Yeah. But at least Kanye West is like legitimately crazy, right? <laughs> and he pays his taxes, so that makes him already a better standard. But yeah, uh, I'm glad to see that he conceded, uh, Larry. Uh, one thing that we do have to give Trump credit for, he is a very good bad example. <laughs> yeah. Very good bad example. Perfectly I mean, well said. It'll be Hitler and Trump from now on you know, when yes. we're talking about fascists and, and uh, people of that elk. And let's make sure we ram that home. Like, you don't want to be a Trumpist. <laughs> you don't want to or be a, Nazi. a Hitler guy. Yeah. Now, how do we or associate or yeah. How do we associate the evangelicals who supported this guy? Oh, you, you know, know because uh, fascists. I'm saying, I'm you saying, know, um, uh, um, uh, you tell me that Jesus is love and you support this guy and nothing yeah. but foul accusations and, you know, come out of his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. One issue. I, I had a talk with an evangelical. He said, I understand all of that. I understand that Trump was a terrible representative for us, but we still love him and endorse him because he's against abortion. Right. And that's wow. single issue that we it's care so crazy to be about. a single issue on that. And let the world burn in climate change. But Dred, you got yeah. the last word. 
Okay, I was just going to say I read this really great article um, on the comparison of Trump to Mussolini okay. and how the evangelicals uh, were really taking the place of uh, Pope Pius the the eleventh mm. um, and essentially duped by uh, Trump's sort of um, pretend allegiance to their cause, uh, but just using them essentially to forward his own agenda. Um, the parallel was, you know, as it was described in the article, is quite striking and uh, disturbing at the same time. No. Where can we find that? I'm argument? glad it's over. I'm glad it's over. I'm, I, yeah. The nightmare it will is be over, over, but we still For have soon. some yeah. leg cramps that we got to work out until January. <laughs> so just be aware that it's going to be a messy ride, but we we hit the slide and we got the momentum and we got off and we're good. We just now need to go back. <laughs> you guys are some of my best friends and I really appreciate talking to you once a week. Thank you for yeah, letting me share some of the Yeah, right on. Uh, Love it, man. Dread Pirate, I know we can find you on YouTube. Is there any other th cool things that you want to recommend that we check out aside from that article? Um, well, I, again, I'm working on uh, this course, the, the skepticism. So um, we're looking at some dates starting in late January okay. and running through to May. Cool. Um, so I'm hoping to, to start lining up some guest speakers. Uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I'm there for um, you, baby. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. You just tell us uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep you all posted uh, as that moves forward. And uh, uh, yeah, stay strong. Nice. Scott, anything you would recommend that we check out over the next week in particular? Uh, I didn't think about that. Uh, not really, at least not relative to this topic. Um, but yeah, just keep your eye Any on the ball, Any cool man. video that you saw, anything awesome <laughs> you saw in the, in the world where the president, got, we have a new president-elect, was there any like inspiring thing? <laughs> what inspiring thing that you saw? <laughs> Uh, not really. I mean, you've probably seen everything I have or probably okay. more. Okay. Yeah. I would. So I, I, if anything, you might want to check out Biden's um, acceptance speech. I think it was very yeah. open. Even if you were a hardcore Trump supporter, there's not dialogue in there. That's like, you know, akin to when Trump won. And it was like, we were going to fire Obama. It was more of like, hey, listen, I'm here to be America's president, number one. And it's not just red and blue. We're here to unite. This is something that we have to do together. Highly recommend that you check it out. Also, if you are more on the Biden-Harris side, you might want to check out a, a, a video, a TED Talk by Van Jones on what if the U.S. presidential candidate refuses to concede? Because there's a lot of issues that are un not spoken or made explicit in our political process such that a person has a legal path from, I didn't win the popular vote, I didn't win the electoral college, but I have an army. <laughs> and I'm gonna do these four steps so that I will win and I'll still be seated next year. And there's a legal pathway for me to do that. And that shouldn't exist, that loophole shouldn't exist in this country. And we can't support something like that. And we need to address that. And if we're gonna address that, maybe we'll have opportunities to address other things with our electoral college that I'm not a particular fan of too. But we, it's a good video, it's Van Jones. Um, what if the US presidential candidate refuses to concede? Van Jones, I'll put a link on my on the, this YouTube channel. Larry, do you have anything? And go ahead and take us out. Well, um, I guess I'm ready to go on. Uh, this has been the Digital Freethought Radio Hour. Be sure to visit digitalfreethought.com for our radio show archives, atheist songs, many articles on the subject. Uh, my book is called Atheism, What's It All About? And it's available on Amazon. If you're having trouble with uh, leaving religious beliefs behind, you can always search for and get help from recoveringfromreligion.org. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. We'll try to get to them on future shows. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>